Hi, I'm Ivan, and today we're going to take a closer look at our DSP hybrid architecture processor Zonix. It comes with 12 analog inputs, 8 analog outputs, as well as 8 GPIs and 8 GPOs. There's also the LD Systems Remote Bus and an Ethernet Control Card, or Ethernet Control plus Dante with 64 inputs and 64 outputs. The unit is fully integrated with Silica Designer, so users can program and integrate it with third-party controls. The concept of hybrid architecture is that we create DSP templates for various installation requirements, so installers can load them and use them by managing DSP parameters, presets, or simply by creating customized panels. The advantage of DSP templates is that they are fully tested in-house, so the installers can offer the best customer support. Let's explore this concept with a hotel example and two lecture rooms, which at times should be combined into one bigger room. For this, we will use our global template. So in Silica Designer's work area, we can simply drag and drop our Zone X processor, just as we already did here. Together with the Zone X, we can also add some drawing elements or other system components, as we did here with the mic and line inputs and the outputs, amplifiers and loudspeakers. But today, let's just focus on the global template. So we can first start by defining the input signals, if they are line or microphone signals. We can also apply phantom power per channel. After that, we can rename our inputs, conference microphone room one, conference microphone room two, etc. As well as some fine adjustments of the level. And later on, we have the whole input processing part with various modules, like a high pass filter, automatic feedback suppressor, noise gates, compressors, pre-dynamic or post-dynamic EQs. Later on, the signals can either go to one of the two gating auto mixers, but at this example, since this is not a typical conference room, but a lecture room, we simply routed all signals directly to the main matrix mixer. From there on, the input signals are routed to the corresponding outputs, room one and room two. The last and the most powerful module is the output processing module. So there we can adjust delay time, gain, mute or invert the polarity. We have an eight band parametric EQ, high pass filter, low pass filter and a limiter so we can EQ and process the room as we want it to. Once we finished all of the processing, we can define a couple of presets, like we did in this example with split rooms, routing the corresponding inputs to the corresponding outputs, or the combined rooms. So we send all input signals to both room one and room two. Once all the processing and presets were defined, the next logical step is to create user panels. Of course, that we can create professional, but at the same time, intuitive user panels. So we can add a user-specific background image. And instead of using typical mute buttons, we can add images. We know that using faders on an iPad, which we want to use in this case, is a little complicated. So we change the fader to be actually an up-down dial. And for typical audio-visual sources, we added some icons. Once the design is ready, we can load it to the devices. So now, let's see how this will look in real life. So the user can simply enable or disable a microphone by tapping on it. And same goes for the audio-visual sources. We can also adjust the volume of the microphones and the overall volume of the room. Now, you may have noticed that we have two separate lecture rooms on one control page. And the reason for this is because in hotels, usually small lecture rooms are combined into one bigger room when we have a bigger event with larger audiences. So for me to go to a combined room, I simply have to press combine rooms. And now all of the sources are routed to all loudspeakers. Once the event is over and the movable wall is back in its place, we can return to split room. Quite a challenging project, but easily handled with the Zone X.